Let's stay with what's happening uh, in the Middle East and Israel's uh, regional wars. John Kavalik is a political commentator. I understand you're actually at the G20 summit, which is pretty convenient actually for us, John, because let's divide the world into the global north and the global south and go back to questions we were asking a year ago about the double standards here. The global north is complaining about what Russia is doing in Ukraine, but it's allowing Israel to keep attacking Palestinians. No, you're, you're right. Um, and that's the way it's been, and that's the way it is, and that's the way it's likely going to stay. Um, when you look at you know, the EU foreign ministers meeting today, when you look at collectively the um, 27 members of the European Union, when you look at 32 members of NATO, you look at the G7, the G20, you look at the UN, 193 members. What the difference is, it's about consensus where everyone must agree versus majority. And that's what we're seeing now. And in this particular case, we're seeing wealthy nations that have economic interests amongst themselves, but also with the state of Israel, who also have substantial um, Israel connectivity within their societies, whether it be political, whether it be economic, commercial, financial. And that's all playing a role in how certain heads of state and heads of government are treating what's happening in Gaza and with respect to engaging or disengaging with the state of Israel. Josep Borrell has tried to impress upon those foreign ministers there in Brussels about the potential breaches of international humanitarian law, of which there seem to be breaches almost every day. But it's not just a question about law here, John. It's a question about what is happening now affecting the way the world order behaves in the future. Surely, what is happening right now in Gaza is a stark, stark example of a breakdown of international law. And we have the EU, which has set itself up as this, what shall we call it, savior of the civilized world? An example to the rest of the world about how to live together as 27 separate nations, as one block? What about the effects of Israel's actions in Gaza on the world's future? You know, you're, you're raising the philosophical points, and unfortunately, they come right up against, I mean, they, they collide with the political. And the political is always much shorter time the line than is the physiosophical. The physiosophical can be you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years. It's built uh, in, into society. And one example builds upon another. And generally, you, you try to get better from that. In this particular case, it's not what's happening. We're seeing the United States, where the United States Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense gave the state of Israel 30 days to be in compliance. What happened? The 30 days came. Media asked the State Department spokesperson, okay, you had this 30 days, now what? Well, they're making some progress, so we're not prepared to say that they haven't made progress. And so the clock keeps ticking. And when the Global South, and not just Global South, but other countries, the majority of the 193 members of the UN, when they see that, it, it's, it's so destructive. And you know, I was with you know, President Erdogan in New Delhi a year ago at the G20 when he said you know, that the world is larger than five, meaning the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. And he said India should be the next member of the UN Security Council, basically the second largest country in the world in terms of population, but it's still not there. And so the effort is important and the dialogue's important and keep talking about it's important. But you know, what everybody wants to see, particularly smaller countries, particularly marginalized countries, particularly those countries that don't have a lot of political heft and financial heft and commercial heft, they want to see something happen. They want to see it stop. And they don't understand why is it that a, a group of wealthy nations is allowing a year to go by and 43, we're at 44,000 now, I'm guessing that number is probably 50,000 or plus once the rubble, the rubble starts getting cleared. And who has done what? Um, and the U.S., which is supposed to be leading, 
hasn't led. It's followed and all it's done is tried to protect Israel. And that's really corrosive. John, we really appreciate you taking time out of your working day to speak to us. John Kavalik in Rio de Janeiro. Take care.